Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show. Today we're talking about speed and not the Keanu Reeves masterpiece, Tomoe Narasaki. Well, he's the protagonist in this one. You're deeply nuts, you know that? What do you think of that link? That was, I practiced that in my head beforehand. Uh, 1996 movie, which I haven't seen yet. Movie? Uh, have you seen the second one with the one with the boat? If I haven't seen the first one, you haven't you think seen I go the first see you haven't the seen the one. You haven't seen Speed? Uh, I'll watch it tonight. Come on, 30 more years of this, you get a tiny pension and a cheap gold watch. Cool. I'm appalled. Uh, but we are going to talk about Speed and specifically how a new Speed PB relates to the Olympics. Olympian and Japanese athlete Tomoe Narasaki has just set a new PB on the speed wall with a blistering time of 5.73 seconds, as reported by 8a.nu. Before the Olympic process started, Tomoa was known as a boulder and lead climber, but with the inclusion of speed into the Olympics, all the athletes had to learn and train this discipline. It's an incredibly quick time, just 0.25 seconds off the world record. Only Basamaon, with a PB personal best of 5.58, has a better time of the qualified male athletes. If Tomoa can perform at his best in the Olympics, this speed could leave him in a very strong position coming into the boulder and lead rounds. That's exciting news. I know, it's pretty cool. And we got to chat about this because it does relate to the Olympics because, yeah. I mean, look, you're, you're an uber geek with these things. You yes. just are. I'm not even being rude. She just is. Nerd alert! How does this sort of relate in terms of that sort of the way that the combined is worked out? What could this mean for the other athletes? So calculating Tomoa's possible win or at least second, second place in, uh, in speed, him first in Boulder, that's one times two. Lead, let's give him third place. That's like six points. Which is low and obviously Which is very the low. lowest points and possible. Like, yes. Yeah. And well, you know, the other names need to get at least two firsts to then beat that. Yeah, and yeah, you're, it just puts pressure on everyone else because the speed round comes first. If you win it, you obviously just get one point, Yeah. which helps for the rest of the round. So. Tomo might not be able to pull out that time in the actual finals. However, he's aiming for 5.5 as a time. As a not speed specialist. Yeah, uh, it's bonkers, isn't it? <laughs> Tomoa, we'll take our collective hats that we're not wearing off to you. We're moving on to some bouldering news from Zillertal. As reported on 8A.NU, Caroline Sinhuber, a center 6th 8B boulder, Nihili Slow in Zillertal. In the video, we see her rocking two different shoes, Scarpa Dragos and Instincts, and she explains that she needed to do a foot swap on a big slippery hold and that Dragos worked best for that. Two shoes, so Adamandra's technique? Yeah, I always love it when athletes do that because it feels a bit like that climbing is not a sport where you can sort of like, you've got gear, right? But you mm -hmm. can't really adapt to that gear that much. But I quite like the thinking behind those shoes where it's just like, right, edging shoe, smearing shoe, off you go. I've just never felt the need. I'm just equally rubbish whatever shoe I use. Doesn't really make any difference. Maybe you should try foot swaps on shoe swaps. How about this? Sorel mountain boots on my left foot, Scarper Instinct on my right foot. Oh, that's nasty. No? No? I tried. I tried. No. no. Uh, I've got some more bothering news, some 8C stuff this time. Giuliano Camaroni has done the first ascent of an 8C boulder called Crystal Ship in Cresciano. He did the climb on January the 8th, but was holding on to the news to time it with the release of a new Mellow YouTube video. This was reported on his Instagram. The line is a mix of power and technical moves. Two days later, Clément Le Chartois, with perfect conditions, repeated the line, having heartbreakingly fallen from the last move three times. I love it when Cristiano ever gets mentioned because it's kind of your home state place where your homies are kicking back in the crib. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Don't know where I'm going with this, but it's kind of your home home area, isn't it? Yeah, it is. When climbing once there, but uh, pretty dope area, and there's so much rock left clearly because mm. the mellow video about it, it's all about new first ascents how, how much does it suck that you started climbing after you left that area i'm honestly blaming the school system though because like <laughs> they taught us about like wars that they fought throwing down boulders but they didn't mention that nowadays you know you climb those boulders right so you're saying climbing should be included into all historical syllabuses in schools no but at least like a light mention of like if you like rock and trees and climbing you might want to try bouldering there you go any teachers listening out there uh, some tips for you to make your next lesson good for the one climber that might be in your class 
Uh, it's meet up next, uh, yes. right? With uh, the 9A roundup. And this week, a lot of people decided to send a lot of 9As. As reported on 88.new, Roland Wagner, at age 41, has done his second 9A, Baumwesen, in Salzburgland. He worked on this route for a total of 26 days. Moving on to Spain, where Tom Bolger has done the first ascent of Mr. Big. He proposed a grade of 9A, describing it as the best route is ever bolted. Also down in Margalef, Spanish climber Jorge Diaz Rulo has sent first lay 9A+, which shares the start with the 9B first round first minute. Jorge describes first lay as a mythical route, with 15 very intense moves on which you can hardly breathe. Marco Zanone is also trying this route, but in the meantime he sent El Portro, a 9A. Let's hear more about this ascent. Hello guys, thanks for having me on the show. I just came back from a 10 day trip in Spain with my friends. The reason why I went there was for climbing first lay. It was uh, the main project uh, of the trip. Uh, but then due to a lack of good condition, I realized that uh, I was not able to send it. So I decided to, to try El Potro. That starts the same as the first lay, then goes right into Bumaye and then straight again into a new line just opened by Adamondra. The route is mostly powerful and bouldery, a uh, style that suits me very well. And uh, the crack is composed by uh, strange moves to get a one finger pocket that it's a good one, but uh, very tiny and uh, you have to be really precise to get that. And uh, from there on, you have two big moves on big pinches, open-handed. You just have to be like uh, relaxed and climb the, the upper slab that share the same exit as uh, Bumaye. Uh, I tried it less than 10 tries. And uh, on the last day of the trip, after having tried the uh, first lay a couple of tries, uh, I was able to, to send it. Even if I was not able to send the first lay, I'm super happy that I could climb uh, El Potro and I can't wait to go back in Spain next winter to try to finish my, my project. Thanks for watching, uh, see you in the next one. Even more 9A news now and Hugo Paremonteur has made the first ascent of a line called Hygiene de l'Assassin and has proposed the grade of 9A. It took him four days to send the route as reported by 8A.nu. Moai Nutolt has jumped three grades to send his first 9A, Hugh. In an interview on AA.nu, he says the route was in his style, with holes and dynamic pockets. Cedric Lechat has repeated Le Cadfist, as reported by Fanatic Climbing. It was first climbed in 2017 by Jérôme Prouvrier and graded 9A, but after a tufa broke, it's now considered to be 9A slash plus. Finally, Seb Wan has made the first ascent of Le Garde Fou, a 9A plus which was first bolted in spring 2020 by him. He thinks it's an amazing line and good training for his Spanish projects, so we caught up with Seb for a little chat. Hi everyone, so here we are at the Crag in saint guillaume le désert Let's talk a little bit of my latest first ascent here. It's called Le Garde Fou and it's 9A plus route. So this route is straight on the overhanging here behind me. And it's quite amazing because when I put it to bolt, I didn't know if it's, it could work so, or not. And every hard was, was there and everything was perfect to, to make a hard route. So this route is typically first 10 meters super hard around 80 plus 9a and then the second part with uh, a 7b plus boulder on the top which is quite hard on the link because it had a lot of risky moves and uh, well at the end uh, i fell five times on the top so so <laughs> it was a bit exhausting at the end but it was a cool line and, and a cool place you, you can uh, you can have a look on, on the place, it's super nice. Ooh. Man, I'm exhausted. We, like, it's one of those weeks where sometimes you sit down and you start writing this and you're like, oh, there's not much news. This, this week, it was just all nine A's and we were like, can we take any out? But there mm -mm. were some cool stories, including Mr. Noi. Uh, Noi. Noi. That's how you say it in Italian. Noi jumping three grades to send nine A. Ah, uh, that's sick. I love it when someone jumps a grade, like, love it. But it's just like, eh, I just, yeah, I'll just jump it. Is it from 8B plus then to 9A? I guess so, yeah. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad. Not bad at all.
9B counter time. Yes. Now, the most exciting 9B news that we've got is uh, David, who's becoming a regular feature on the show. David See? is doing our job. Thank you very much, David. So thank you so much, David. And we might have a little extra counter because there are a lot of kids. So people be between, no, below the age of 13 who are sending like hard roots. You're talking about Theo and, and the other kid. I'm so bad with names. Anyway, yes, I do think we should maybe add a little counter. You want to add another counter when we've clearly just taken away all the counters and now you're adding counters. Yeah, but it's not our job anymore. We can just propose it. Right. To the world. I mean, I strongly object to this, but it's up to David now, really. So, David, do you want another another, another job for free? We'll see. Comment below. So, shop stuff now. And T, you've got some uh, shoe stuff. Yes, Tenaya is back in stock. So grab yourself a new pair of climbing shoes. And if you don't know how to size ten your Tenayas, you can just check out the video that we made about shoe sizing. And there is a link down below. There you go. So get a bargain and the correct size at the same time. Uh, C to Summit, cool little brand. They do sort of things like sleeping bags, sleeping mats, cooking accessories. So if you're a camper, um, which I am, I love a bit of camping, uh, then head over to C to Summit because they make great lightweight. <laughs> I nearly did that without having to giggles. Um, you get a great lightweight climbing gear, camping gear, all that. It's good stuff. I've used it before. I like it a lot, especially like the collapsible pot things. Nice and colorful. That's and nice and colorful, which is your whole thing, add. isn't it? You just want it to be beautiful. If it's beautiful, then you're happy. Aesthetically pleasing. There we go. Exactly. Uh, Next. Content couch. <laughs> I forgot where we're going then. Content couch stuff. Um, climbing daily this week. Interesting guy. Uh, kid. Yes, kid. 15 in that video. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, sending his first AB plus route in Australia. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, AB, I think it was for that. But th this is kind of a little expose we did in this young man called Dylan. Uh, and we were contacted by a f filmmaker called Lucas Carotto. He sent us some footage of Dylan. And look, I'll stop talking. Check out this teaser. Hold it, Nana. Hold it. Normal. <laughs> me a big smile. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dylan Sowen, and I'm a 14-year-old rock climber from the northern beaches in Sydney, Australia, and I've been climbing for four years. Dylan's family moved to Australia from the UK when he was four years old, and he threw himself into climbing to help cope with the change. He's the youngest person in the country at 14 years old to send a V12 slash 13 boulder, and he's won multiple youth national championships. It's always really good to see rock climbing in Australia because of that amazing red rock. And actually the movie that this interview comes from is embedded on the Epic TV website. So check out the full movie and check out the interview. Cool, so moving on from the content couch into comment of the week. Yes. Uh, are you feeling singing like today? I'll leave it up to you today. You want, you want me to sing today? Mm. All right, so I'm gonna sing. <clears throat> I'm feeling sort of kind of like, choppy so you go, C -c comment comment of the week but i don't know what style that was maybe trilling trilling when you go blah, blah, blah. okay um thanks for singing actually i trilled it up uh, my comment is from Alex. Alex said, Matilda Soderlund posted a video on her Instagram doing a two-handed pull-up on a six mil edge. Good luck, Matt. You're going to need it. Uh, this is all about, remember we are talking about the one armour on a six mil edge. I like a challenge. I like being challenged. I would just like some six mil edges, please. So if any hold manufacturers, Beastmaker, are out there, could you send me some six mils? Please, please. Come on. I'll add on to the challenge. Why just not make them yourself? Because that would truly be a challenge because me and a saw and a screwdriver and some wood is not a good combination. I don't DIY. Okay. My comment is from Morpho Mouse and they say a tip for Teresa. 
Probably not the intention, but it's rude to cut someone off with anyway. Matt is probably too nice to tell you that. Anyway, she- let's finish this show now. Uh, thank you so much for watching the new show. And we'll see you later.